No, that's too bad. <laughs> Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the October 19, 2015 Selectman's Meeting. We're going to start with public comment. Anyone wishing to make public comment? Charlie. Welcome. Thank you. I just want to touch briefly on the town manager report. It says um, number five. Please keep in mind the town parking lots are closed effective October 15th, except for special events at the beach. Vehicles parked in violation will be ticketed. I, <clears throat> I just wanted to see, I know some, some things have been done in the past and that we allow people in the neighborhoods to park for storm events, the snow, any storm surge flooding events, and I'm, and I'm sure that the public works, they do a great job, can tweak it and let people know. You know, instead of just saying, you know, everybody's going to be ticketed and we, we can't do that. And uh, that's all pretty much I want to touch on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Final app on 27 I Street. I would just like to thank Mary Louise, Mike Pluck, Sonny Kravitz. We had a nice walk around DPW. Mike and I raced some trucks around. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but I just want to say uh, I really appreciate um, the information that we got, and it really helped. So thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment this evening? <clears throat> Seeing none, um, we'll move on to uh, announcements and community calendar. Mr. Bridal. I would just like to uh, say today that there was a... Uh, as, as a lot of people know, they have these honor flights for our our, uh, our veterans. Um, well, we have one veteran from Hampton who wasn't able to make it this year on his honor flight. So um, today they did a non-flight honor flight for uh, Colonel Paul Lassard up in Portsmouth today uh, with the veterans and the other groups that did that. And uh, it was to basically honor him for his 35-year service to our country and uh, I just want to thank those people that went to that today I want to thank the uh, the veterans that are out there that, that helped put this on and uh, I think it was a great honor for, for uh, Colonel Lassard thank you thank you Mrs. Wolseley um, yes just we received a notice that the Aquarian Water Company is going to be cleaning the water mains so those of you who didn't get a notice just so you know the cleaning will occur during weekdays from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. through the end of November on transmission mains on Exeter Road, Lafayette Road, and Mill Road in Hampton, Lafayette Road, Post Road, and Winnicott Road in Northampton. Uh, you can check alerts and outages on Aquarian's website, www.aquarian.com slash nh. And... There was a, uh, we received a report from a local um, taxi owner of possible illegal activity by an individual operating a taxi service in town. I'm very grateful to that gentleman for his heads up. We don't want illegal activities and having people get in trouble. So it's very nice if people it's, uh, see something, say something, I guess. And I'm very grateful to the gentleman for stepping forward. Thank Mr. You, Mr. Chairman, uh, yeah, I uh, just wanted to respond to some of the um, uh, editorial comment by uh, elected town officials in the Hampton Union. We've spoken about this before. You've uh, informed me, Mr. Chairman, this is an appropriate uh, vehicle to uh, discuss it. But uh, the most recent uh, article on 1016 talks about a lack of transparency for political advantage, talks uh, the verbiage is. Uh, talking about a basic ploy, uh, it talks about uh, incorrect command and uh, staff executions by Mr. Welch. It talks about political advantage. 
talks about strategy being deployed by the town manager and department heads. It's a pattern of stifling conversation and a debate that Selectman Woolsey appears to be the only one that has the interest of the general public at, at heart. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then there's discussion about uh, having too many Warren articles uh, may turn prospective voters off from voting since it will be difficult to wade through uh, these items and special interests will prevail and create a backlash against the Board of Selectmen. Um, there's uh, mention of a steamrolling of, of these Warren proposals and then a, a call to end hostility directed towards the Budget Committee. That was on 10-16 uh, uh, by an elected official. Uh, most recently, unethical tactics behind mid-year pay raises. Uh, there's an assertion that an, an employee in the town of Hampton has received a $30,000 pay raise. Uh, the idea that the Board of Selectmen have given a salary increase in excess of 50% of $30,000 $30, to one employee, which is simply not true. Um, at the end, uh, the comment from this elected official is, these are egregious examples of sloppy oversight and or cronyism that taxpayers of Hampton can ill afford to have lazy selectmen and weak town in administration if the future is to remain bright. Uh, there's additional editorial comment about uh, firemen um, and not supporting a pay raise of 2% last year. And the most recent, and I'll be a wrap up right after this after reading uh, an email from this person to me. Um, it talks about the lack of transparency. And I have an email here from this elected official, uh, Mr. Silberdick, on 4 11 uh, 13 at 8 54 a.m. Uh, it is from Norman Silberdick. It is to my town email address. Uh, and in the interest of full transparency, I wanted to share it to you. <coughs> Uh, and it was an article on Fred is the subject. And it goes on for three paragraphs, but I'll give the highlights. Um, we want us to maintain our focus, and this is talking about the Rational Taxpayers Association, uh, on more important taxpayer issues and not get too political on personnel, personnel issues, but he, meaning Mr. Welch, is a weak stick. In the second paragraph, uh, and again in the interest of full transparency of an email sent to me by an elected official, uh, to me as a selectman, uh, Fred's current contract status should not color any review of his performance to date, as we believe his total lack of leadership has cost the town money. We view him as a Teflon town manager just there for the ride prior to retirement. So I wanted to be fully transparent about some of the communications I've had with Mr. Silberdick. This was uh, dated 4-11-13. I never responded to the email. Uh, subsequent to that email, uh, several weeks later, there was a motion by a board member to depose uh, the chairman of the board of selectmen, uh, and that was voted for. Uh, and uh, it feels good to be transparent. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Moving on to the consent agenda. Number uh, one is parades and public gathering license. A being the American Legion Post Veterans Day ceremony. B being the Experience Hampton Christmas Parade. Two, street closure permit. Num A is Experience Hampton Christmas Parade. Three, Surfside taxi driver applications. And four, appointments to Hampton Beach Area Commission John Nyan, three-year term. I'll so move the consent agenda, Mr. Chairman. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Moving on to appointments. First, we have Norman Silberdick, trustees of the trust funds. And is, is there others that would like to come up and join sure. you? Sure. We have our Please do. Board here. Yeah, come on up. And an investment advisor. Advisors. We can get you some of these other chairs if you'd like. Okay. There's one right there. Yeah, I think they're all equally uncomfortable. <laughs> sure. Uh, I think it would be appropriate everybody can introduce themselves. John, why don't you start? Uh, I'm John Troyano. David Mays with Mackinson & Company. Bill Hartley, trustee. 
Norman Sobrick, trustee. Uh, Steve Stokes with Mackinson and Company. John Sobich, trustee. Welcome. Did you want to? Well, the, I, I'm going to let David make a, a remark about where we stand right now since our last um, uh, presentation and meeting with him. Uh, in terms of? The fund, where, where, where we are at the moment. You might want to just put that thing over a little closer or, I don't know, or sit a little closer to the table when you're going to be speaking. <clears throat> I think yeah. you're, you're probably fine. Bear with me. Steve, okay. do you have the current statement? I, I don't have the, I have a, you can also stand up if you'd be more comfortable. I just want to make sure we have the right numbers for you. I don't have, the, I have the September 30 one. Okay. Yeah. David, do you have your email? This is on it. So the balance in the real estate trust fund as of October 17, 2015 is $18,125,406. There is also an additional uh, accrual of income that will be paid out to the town at the end of October, early November. Uh, I believe that's around $41,000. 41,554. There will be additional income during the month that will be included in that figure. So as the market goes up, as the market goes down, as the market goes up, as the market goes down, the market went back up in the last several weeks and the fund has responded accordingly. Uh, we sent you some information background on the fund and the, the way we operate and, and our approach to investing, et cetera. And we have received a letter from Mr. Welch with some ideas on, uh, I, I don't know if that's a consensus of the board or it's just Mr. Welch's thoughts about uh, liquidating the portfolio, but fundamentally we see our responsibilities as elected officials is to manage this trust fund separate and apart from the responsibilities of the of the trustees, I mean, of the Board of Selectmen, and we feel we're doing the best job we can for the town of Hampton in generating approximately $700,000 income per year. And we understand the markets go up and down, but over a long term, which is our philosophy, the town will benefit from being able to account for inflation. We have increased the portfolio. Uh, for in the last five years by four, four million plus, and we feel confident uh, as a board that our strategies and our direction and our best in policy are the best things for the town. Did anyone else feel, want to say anything at this time? No. Mr. Bridal. I'm set for right now. Mrs. Wolseley. Gentlemen, um, one of the selectmen's goals for uh, this year, uh, actually showing as number eight uh, in our goals list, eight of, oh, I'm sorry, number six, says discuss pursuing legislative and town meeting approval to borrow from the town trust fund under no interest terms. Current law requires borrowing at prevailing bank rates. Some members feel this is a missed opportunity for the town to address current needs. Um, we did mention this, I think, the last time you gentlemen were in, but if you don't mind uh, addressing uh, your feelings as the uh, elected trustees of the trust fund as to the um, wisdom of the Board of Selectmen uh, asking the public to grant authority to tap the, um, the Hampton Beach um, trust fund. fund, trust yeah. fund. You want to take a shot at that? I'm happy to. <laughs> the, as I indicated our, at our prior meeting, if <coughs> we lend money to the town, I hope everybody can hear me, if we lend money to the town, at no matter what rate of interest it is, uh, and that is money that was being earned independently. So if you borrow $2 million 
and you pay us 5%, that's $100,000 of interest income we're going to get, uh, interest expense you're going to get. We get the 100, you pay us 100,000, we get 100,000, and we turn it back to you. So the effective cost of capital is zero. W meanwhile, you have the ability to go out and borrow money from other financial institutions or whatever the market rates are. We think they are lower than what the cost of capital would be with us. And meanwhile, by doing that, you're going to lose the income that we are earning and giving to you from our investments. And we don't think that's a very prudent strategy to follow. Now, is that answer your question, Mrs. Wolsey? Well, I think we just received a, a, a memo on the, um, I think Fred, Fred sent us a memo of the, uh, bond situation in New Hampshire being better this year. Something has improved. I can't put my fingers on that immediately, but that certainly looks hopeful. Um, would you recommend it? Bill gave a good presentation the last time you gentlemen were in. Would you, were you as trustees, individual trustees, or as a board of trustees, recommend that we touch the, uh, the real estate trust fund for borrowing under those circumstances? No, I don't think so. I think the the interest that we earn uh, is benefiting the town. And if you take that away, you won't get that interest. Mm -hmm. And you'll have to borrow money s somewhere else uh, in addition to what you borrow from us. And you mentioned something about the 100-year investment or picture of handling this fund. Well, we invest uh, uh, with a long-term mm -hmm. goal, and we, we view our... Um, our money, our $18 million, just like Harvard University uh, looks at their endowment, mm -hmm. that that money is going to be there, and we, we uh, siphon off the income for the benefit of the town, but the principal stays uh, with the trustees, and the trustees invest it with a long-term perspective, bearing in mind that the market's go up and down, mm -hmm. and, and every time the market goes down, we don't change our course. Um, and the, when the market goes up, we don't change our course. So uh, when you have a long-term perspective, you can do that. If you were an individual that was, was going to retire in a couple of years, you couldn't do that because you would need the money sooner. Well, I think Norman just mentioned it, and, and that's the part that I focus on. Um, you, when you have the real estate trust fund there intact, that gives us great leverage for seeking bonds to be used for construction, sewer construction, you, whatever. You the list community. the 18 million as an asset on the town's balance sheet. When you go to the bond bank. And when you go to the bond market, they see that $18 million mm -hmm. and that gives them comfort. It gives us better leverage in yes. borrowing. Thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate well, what you do. John? Are you saying that the intent is to change the law? Is that what? Oh, the intent is to ask permit the, the article. Well, first of all, the, the um, note in goals, and I'm trying to find the Warren article, says to authorize us to. I've got too many papers here. Bear with me for a second. Did you say zero interest? Yes. Okay, so there's a difference so between, he referred to as, what, 5% interest. Well, I just made that number up. Yeah, no, I, understand. Not, I understand. Yes. I have no idea what I think she's bought. talking zero. No, no, what it, I was just, oh, there it is, thank you. Without interest. Yeah. I thought I heard yes. say that. No. Without interest, but we are earning interest already from the trust fund as it sits. Right. Um, yes, because the idea would be to present a Warren article, which has, is in draft form at the moment, to ask the public to give us the authority to borrow from the town trust fund under no interest firm uh, terms. I'm sorry. Um, I, I really am very nervous about doing something like that, so I just wanted to. Couldn't that be done by town vote? Or does, since it's a law, the trust fund was written into law, does you have to go back to I, Concord? I believe that they would have to go back to Concord. That's how I understand it. Okay. I, that's what I thought she was referring to, zero interest. <clears throat> and 
Mr. Bean. Yes, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, Mackinson and company, uh, the last time you were in here was under uh, the, uh, uh, the cloud of Wall Street as it exists today, and I personally thank you for your integrity and for your service, and, and I do so again tonight. It's not easy to uh, run your own personal finances. It's not easy in this environment. Health care has been nationalized. Wall Street effectively in 2008 was, was nationalized. They ran it up on the rocks. This isn't the old Wall Street. This isn't the uh, Wall Street of our Father's Day, uh, and it, it requires command attention. You have sovereign and individual uh, uh, responsibilities and collective rights uh, outside of any other board, including the selectmen, as trustees of the trust funds. That's codified in law. The selectmen, additionally, have uh, individual and sovereign rights uh, over all town assets under applicable RSAs. And we intend to uh, keep a, a, a light shining, at least during my tenure, uh, and I thank other board members on uh, the, the progress of that fund, um, what the money is in, and uh, take a keen interest and a special pride that Hampton has had such a remarkable uh, success story, not only with the geographic boundary of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, in a boundary with the state and an economic relationship with the state, but how well that fund has performed over the year. So uh, not all is negative, not all is uh, bad news and uh, combative, if you will, all the time. Uh, but it is uh, time for the big boy uh, diapers when we talk about $18, $19 million. And uh, um, it's nothing more than that. It's command attention under our responsibilities. Uh, we all live in town. Uh, we're taxpayers in town, many of us, and uh, we get asked questions. And during our watch, if we were not to meet, if we were not to uh, discuss this when there is such a volatile swing, uh, we would be probably much different than every other Mackinson customer that uh, maybe incurred a million-dollar loss on paper, if you will, and uh, never gave you a call. So uh, we're doing our due diligence. We appreciate your integrity. We appreciate your service. I regularly scour the uh, minutes of the New Hampshire retirement system, and uh, it's, it's, it's funny to see where the contracts are going with those uh, allocations of, of resources. I was on there today. There's a firm that specializes in uh, buying up Argentinian debt. Uh, this, is, this, is a, a, this is a municipal bond platform in Argentina, and they've gone bankrupt and not paying anybody. And Gramercy, if I'm reading correctly today, if I'm reading correctly the minutes, is uh, taking it to the Supreme Court to challenge that, that distribution uh, of, of bond payments in, in federal court, and it should go to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And we have the public pension system in the state of New Hampshire investing in governments that have defaulted on their bonds and making money off of bonds. And there's nothing more central and integral to the functioning of a government than bonds, and here we are in the New Hampshire retirement system investing money in people that are exploiting that phenomena. And it, it should be mutually exclusive, and I can see some smiles, and it, <laughs> it's, it's odd stuff. Uh, and I don't know how many people go to the New Hampshire retirement system and read that, but if I were a union member, a town employee, a state employee, I would have certain heartburn about that. I just would, because when governments whether they're Hampton or their states or their countries default on bonds, and then you have state pensions investing in them, I, I think that's a huge problem. I really do. Anyway, back to the point. We do our homework here on the board. We thank you for your integrity. We thank you for your service, and uh, make us some money. Thank you. Thank you. I, just, I just would like to add one, one more thing. You have uh, requested information from us, uh, which I think is great, and we continue to provide you with monthly and quarterly reports if there's any if that doesn't meet your needs and you wish any additional information we're here to serve so that's our goal uh, mr bridal no we appreciate the information you've given us uh, you guys do an excellent job and uh, thank you for your service. thank you very much oh i didn't get to talk oh okay <laughs> excuse me i hope you haven't invested in any argentinian bonds no 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 90 <laughs> percent John, <laughs> actually, that's a, uh, a no, crazy, no. I mean, the pension system is, has such a demand for meeting its future obligations, and it's so woefully 
under underfunded. Mm -hmm. They're taking some significant risks to try and get the returns they want. John is more of an expert in in, uh, in hedge fund activities and risk bonds, but uh, and he can he can give you stories. That's very risky. Now, when I was in Argentina, I can't tell you how many Americans I met that went down there and bought when they devalued the currency. Mm -hmm. And um, it sounded like a good thing to do, because I think they just, didn't they recently do it again, devalue it? Yeah. But, um, you know, I personally am a believer in the stock market, so I don't have any questions. Thank you for right. coming in this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs>
Before we get started, um, Mrs. Wolsey, Deputy Chief Hobbs is going to smile for you because you accused him of never smiling at the meeting. So go ahead, do it. it, it it's at least <laughs> nice to see his daughter can smile. You got that in there. <laughs> <laughs> he said they were cuter than me, so I got yeah. it. Did you all receive the uh, package of the Warren articles that we're going to be presenting? That one and also the uh, description, the Warren article package from the Thank manager. We're drowning in paperwork. You understand. I understand. Like you are. The first one I want to start with is, uh, as you can see, those are the four primary. There is one other Warren article, and that would be the asset forfeiture fund has no impact on the tax rate. That is the four, the fund that we receive money through if we are part of an investigation where we do seize assets from issues such as drug dealers. Um, I do anticipate in the future we'll be receiving some funds as we do have an officer assigned to a task force on that, but we didn't put that up there because it's really something that every year we, we, we get uh, that, that warrant article up there. Just it gives us the permission to spend the money if we have it. Uh, moving forward, we'll go right on to the tasers. Read the article. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of eighty thousand for the purchase of uh, fifty tasers and their associated maintenance, equipment, warranties, and training? And then the rest of it just goes on to the funding mechanism. Um, I want to speak to what the tasers are. If uh, you're not familiar with this tool, I, a number of years ago I was actually on the front page of the Hampton Union uh, doing a demonstration of. Uh, the utilization of that tool. <clears throat> the reason we really uh, switched to something like taser as opposed to the traditional sticks that we used and other uh, implements is it reduces injuries to officers and suspects. Um, what we frequently see is when we utilize uh, hands-on tactics or things such as batons, we're going to cause injuries to, to individuals and sometimes to ourselves, uh, just getting in that close. What the taser does is give us the ability to maintain control on a suspect at a, at a safe distance, get them under control, and safe, safely take them into custody uh, above and beyond any other uh, techniques that we've, we've used in the past. As you can see, it provides a less lethal alternative. That's what it's termed as a less lethal alternative. Not to be confused that in properly used, um, it can cause serious damage and injury. So that's why part of this includes the training. It's very important that uh, the officers are properly trained in the use of this tool. You'll also notice that we've expanded the number in the past. I think we were up to uh, 30 or so tasers. We're expanding the program to include our part-time officers. In the past, part-time officers have not had the ability to have this tool on their belt. Uh, we want to expand that, um, particularly when we're dealing with decreasing number of officers out there working. We want to give the officers every advantage they can have out there. Uh, again, and it quickly incapacitates a suspect. It's one of those tools. Nothing's 100%, but we've found a high degree of reliability in our, in our times using it. And if there are any questions on the tasers. Hey, Mr. Bridal. No, I think it's something that uh, it's another tool in the toolbox. And uh, as we move forward, I think it's something that you definitely need. So thank you. Mrs. Wilson. Replacing all of the current ones, you're phasing them in. Are they all in bad shape? Work, the old work. ones are well beyond their serviceability. The manufacturer will put out most okay. of the tools we use, and they're well beyond that. They're a couple of years. I believe it's a five-year okay. term on these that the manufacturer recommends, and we'll be on that on all of them. Do you have a maintenance, any kind of maintenance agreement or warranty when you get these? That will come with a warranty, and there, there's a bit of a smorgasbord of the warranties that you can get, and we want to try to get the maximum warranty simply because the environment we work in uh, with the crowds we deal yeah. with and the salt air environment yeah. and then the cold, we want to get the best warranty we can. Is that factored into the 80,000? Yes. Okay. Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. Um, do, is there any research of uh, which does it offer? Does it help more for the officer or, you know, prevent in more? In it, is it equally the... Uh, as opposed to the suspect? Yes. I can't answer that. Uh, I could get that information for you. I was just you, curious. But it has shown to reduce um, injuries to both. Okay, great. We can move on to the next one, I believe. Okay. Body-worn cameras.
Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $90,000 for the purpose of purchasing, purchasing 18 body-worn cameras for police officers along with their associated warranties, equipment, storage, and training? And again, it goes on to explain the funding mechanism. Uh, body-worn cameras, as we all know, with uh, things we're seeing today in society, um, people are looking for that. They're, they're, when we stop people, do you have a... Do you have video? Do you have a camera video or do you have body cameras? Uh, we haven't had uh, cruiser cameras in, in quite some time. Uh, back in the day when we had them, there were still a lot of bugs to work out, and we never went back down that road. In this day and age, I think the body camera is preferable to the cruiser camera just because it gives you more ability to use it in a variety of situations. Many of our officers are on foot. Uh, during the summer months. Many of the encounters they have are while they're on foot, not necessarily in the car. So that's why I'm advocating for the body cameras. Uh, some of the points we're making here, it provides transparency during interactions between the public and the police. We are living in a time where people question their government, and that includes the police, and many times accusations are made. Um, nothing tells you better the story than if you have the actual video. Um, overwhelmingly, the officers support this. Uh, I mean, there are some concerns with the new, current New Hampshire law that's currently being worked on as to where and when you can utilize these, uh, these devices, but I'm confident that it's going to be uh, better than what we've had, which is we haven't had these. Uh, very few agencies in the state have them. Uh, I think moving forward, I think it's, it's going to become a standard, an expectation of, of modern law enforcement to have these. Uh, potential for reduction in confrontational incidents and complaints against officers. I think with a lot of people, if they know they're being videoed, it does change their behavior. Um, and that includes the officers, too. Um, let's face it, if an officer knows that he's being videoed, uh, I think it's going to add a degree of compliance to policies. And as you see one, it's going to assist in evidence collection and officer compliance with our policies, particularly in the area of use of force. Those are really where you're seeing those complaints coming out that are gaining national attention is the use of force issues. So I feel this will assist us greatly in defending the town against any erroneous complaints. Mr. Bridal. No, I think it's society as a whole, the way it's turned out over the past number of years. Uh, I, think, uh, I think only to protect yourselves from what's out there, I think it's an excellent choice, and I got no problem with it. Number of cameras? I'm targeting 18. Please understand that the number I'm providing, I don't have a bid out at this point. Yeah. These are just Best. spec numbers. I'm actually traveling out to the IAC conference on Friday, and I will be spending some time at a number of different vendors to get drill down some more solid numbers. But I feel the uh, for 18 body cameras, and it's not the cameras that cost so much, it's the storage. When we take a video of that nature, it becomes evidence, and we have to have chain of yeah. custody, and there's many different ways to do that. Yeah. And we're looking at a number of different options for the cameras, but also primarily the storage is my big concern, as, w as long as it meets a standard of chain of custody of evidence is the big one. Storage as in retrieving information from the cameras at the end of a shift and then putting The simplistic one, the most simplistic way to do it, and there's a, there are systems that do this, is an officer leaves on a shift with that camera. Yeah. When he returns, he puts it into a docking station. It automatically downloads. Now, you can either have it download to an internal system, or they actually have now systems uh, that you can download to the cloud, where you don't have to maintain it. A private vendor maintains that for you, but with a degree of security that will reach our, um, our evidence issues that we have to have. The chain of custody of evidence is, is critical. Yeah. If we're going to use this in a trial or any type of legal proceeding, we have to show that it hasn't been tampered with in any way, um, so there are private vendors that are bonded and that specialize in this type of thing. So we're going to explore that as opposed to our own storage, compare the two. So when the cloud goes kerplop, we're all in trouble. Well, you could say that about a lot of things. If the <laughs> Internet fails, we have, we have some problems. The intent would be to get a service contract or a, some type of warranty on these? Yes, exactly. Let me read that again to you, that uh, portion. Along, uh, it's for the cameras along with the associated warranties, equipment, storage, and training, because there's going to be some training that's going to be required. Now, th this is interesting to me because these are uh, mounted on the gentleman's eyeglasses that I'm seeing here. Oh, if you go to that one, there's a, there's a multi... Uh, the ones I've seen have mostly been hooked on 
you know, shoulder or... This is uh, a system that I believe is called Axion, and mm -hmm. it's uh, by the same folks that make Taser, the very reliable group, and I will be looking hard at them. But they give a uh, different ways to mount the camera. Some officers may prefer, prefer to have the camera, but the other ones either mount uh, seen them. on the shoulder yeah. or right here in the center of the yeah. chest. That looks uncomfortable. Just having it hanging we're gonna off you. We're going to try to experiment with all of them before we decide. you got enough stuff hanging off you. Yeah. Uh, this is stupid, but you don't mind stupid questions when you come in. Um, this gentleman is wearing sunglasses, and he has that mounted on the temple piece of his Correct. eyeglasses. You can take those off. For example, if you're out on your shift and you're wearing that, and Fred is next on the shift and he wears eyeglasses, you could mount them. You could take that off yours and put them on There here. are certain glasses, like some people don't wear, I, I wear eyeglasses, right. but David doesn't. There would be a set of glasses that he could wear out on patrol. Clear glasses. You would, yeah. Right. But a you can change them. You, they don't, they're not stuck on that one person's pair of eyeglasses. No, glasses. you can see it's a clip system. You can move. Okay. Yeah. okay. It's transferable. Transferable. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Negative, sir. <clears throat> and I don't have any questions. Next item will be the uh, mounted truck. Shall the town of Hampton <clears throat> vote to raise appropriate the sum of forty thousand for the purpose of purchasing and equipping a sufficient vehicle purchased from a vendor from the New Hampshire State bid price list to be utilized by the Hampton Monitor Patrol in its operations? The current vehicle we have is a 2003 um, Ford vehicle with approximately just over 56,000 miles on it. Let me go to the next slide. Um, the deputy was kind enough to get under the vehicle and take some pictures <laughs> of that's the frame and the rust you see. That's good. What we've experienced with the prior vehicles, um, while this vehicle doesn't have a lot of miles, it's old. Yeah. And what we've experienced with vehicles that get into that 9, 10, and now this vehicle's, uh, we're going on 11, uh, 12 years. Because of the environment we work in, that salt air and that brackish water when we drive through down the beach, and we do use this vehicle in the wintertime for uh, uh, winter snow operations, um, we get that degree of rot and rust. And in my time with the Hampton Police Department, at least in the command staff, we've had to take three cars that, other than the frame, were operating great, but the frame rotted through. My fear is that we're on well on our way, if you look at the pictures, to the same issue with this vehicle. And I just don't want to experience that in the middle of the summer where the vehicle's now inoperable and we have a mounted unit to function with. There are other options, uh, but I think it's one of these things we want to get ahead of the curve on this one because I don't see us getting more than another year out of this vehicle if we get that. Questions, Mr. Bridal? Nope. The, uh, as he stated, it's been in the salt air, salt water. Um, it gets used in the winter a lot, and uh, if you've ever had a vehicle at the beach, you know that it's you got to replace them sooner than yeah, later. We purchased there. this vehicle the same year we purchased Pete McKinnon's pickup truck, and we got rid of that last year because of similar mm -hmm. problems, the rust Correct. and the corrosion. As much as we try to maintain them, that's just something that over time you're going to lose that battle eventually. Right. So and where this is hauling a trailer around with, with horses and stuff, the weight, you absolutely. The weight, you don't, you don't want to take a chance with having yeah. a, a frame issue. So I got no problem with it. Mrs. Wilson. Where do you store the truck? Just in the parking lot? It's not undercover? No. Uh, during the summer months and the preseason, we move the truck up to where we have the horses up at the uh, Gailey Stables up in Hampton Falls. Mm -hmm. And they are kind enough to let us store our trailer and our truck there during operational periods. During this time of year, we bring the truck where the mounted isn't being used on a excuse me on a regular basis. We do bring the truck back to the PD for whatever use we may have for it. Okay, um, this is used to pull the horse trailers. I Correct. Know. Just to clarify for the public, mm -hmm. um, I am hoping that we can get our wash down facility and an associated. Um, repairs down at the Public Works Department so that you and the other departments can put your vehicles through that and perhaps help. I, I had did not crawl under the fire officers' trucks uh, Sunday, 
but there's substantial rust in the underpinning. And I think those are both 2003s as well. And there's substantial rust in the undercarriage on those. And I'm hoping that if we can put these through the equivalent of a large equipment car wash so that you can really get the undercarriage clean. I don't disagree. I mean, this truck is a good, the, the engine is solid mm -hmm. in it. Everything else is working well. We maintain our vehicles pretty well, but this is just something we cannot combat other than if we had to wash this like you're describing. I'm hoping. It would be greatly. Because Mr. Jacobs that. said that you should be able to put the, the big equipment, including the ladder truck, through what he has designed. Thank you. Mr. Bean? Negative, sir. So these are uh, the most important items you have. Actually, the most important one is the next one. Um, I would oh. highlight that the, the next, this is, as the manager asked me one day, if you could only have one, which mm -hmm. one would it be? And it would be this one. It's the most critical one to the department and to the town's liability and risk management. Uh, so if I can, shall the town of Hampton vote to erase and appropriate the sum of 80000 for the purchase of a video surveillance system and its installation, maintenance, and associated warranties for the Hampton Police Department headquarters facility. And again, it's just the, the rest of the language is the funding mechanism. So what we're hoping to do is replace an existing failing system. Uh, as I've described in the past, it's, we're starting to have problems. Um, and we have some critical areas, uh, particularly the booking room, the sally port, and I think the lobby. A lot of, a lot of things happen in, in the lobby <clears throat> that we need to have on video. Um, we're looking to provide surveillance to sensitive areas. This also includes the installation warranties and, asso and the associated warranties. The system we're looking at is a little bit different than what we've had. Uh, we, we've been using the DVRs for a number of years. We have four DVRs that, that are starting to fail at different stages. Um, one of them is down. Um, so we've had to move things around uh, that by priority. This system would go to more of a, a network system. Um, it would be easier for the user. It's more user friendly so that if we needed to get in to monitor what was going on or to go back in time and look at it, it's much more user friendly and accessible for us to utilize and I believe easier to maintain. Uh, we did look at the potential of a lease system, um, but over the course of a short time, the purchase I feel is a better option for us. Within three years, we would have expended the same cost as this purchase uh, based on the lease. Sometimes a lease is a good thing. Uh, sometimes the purchase is, is a better option. I just feel in this light, in this circumstance, that the purchase is the way for us to go. Mr. Bridal. When were the uh, cameras put in that building when it was new? When it was new, 2005, when we walked so in. So we're talking over 10 years old. Ten years. Yeah, we got our money's worth out of this. You system. got your money's, and how much have cameras improved over 10 years and, and systems improved over 10 years? Oh, they're just, I mean, look at Channel 22, the difference between what you see now and what you saw 10 years ago. Yeah. Now add that to a surveillance system. Right, and, I, and I, I look at it just at my own house. I mean, 10 years ago, you had TVs with big tubes on them. Now you got nice little flat TVs on the wall. and. And, and, and so people got to realize that you got to every once in a while replace this stuff because it does get worn, it does get outdated. Probably the stuff you have now you probably can't even buy parts for. So Well, I think we became victim to all, like we do with a lot of things. You know, if you go back five years ago, six years ago, maybe we could have begun replacing some of these things. But you got to remember what the mood was at the time. We, we, were, we still experienced some default budgets and issues with, with uh, budgeting that we had to put those things on the back burner and go to the more uh, the things that are priority. Well, when you look at it with some priorities, this is at the top of the list now because of the time. And again, we got 10 years out of it. Um, I think you got your money's worth. <laughs> trying to get people to come in. I mean, we could try to patch it together, but I think we're going to spend more money over the time trying to patch it Absolutely. together as opposed to let's start fresh with fresh technology and build off of that. And maybe as we move through the budget processes and we settle into where we're going to be going for the next 10 to 15 years, we can get into a program of better upkeep and better maintenance, or it's going to be, we, we could be experiencing this again in Same. 10 to 12 years. Absolutely. Uh, that's so, a possibility. I think it's a good idea. i got no problem with this. Okay. Mrs. Wolseley. Chief, like the body cameras, where is the information or how, where or how is the information stored in your current system? And where would the information be stored if you get the new system? 
The current system is DVRs. It's uh, digital video recorders. Right. And there's a number of them to uh, account for that. I think it's 46 cameras we have in the building. Date and time stamped, all that exactly. stuff. Exactly. So when, this, when we first got that system, it was great. Uh, I remember the system in the old PD. It, if I had to go back and look something based on a complaint, it would take me hours yeah. to find this. Yeah. We can now go with the system we had, date range it, pixel search it, and it was pretty good. The system we're going to go to is going to be much faster because it's not going to be on a DVR, it's going to be on a network. Uh, kind of like the computer system, it's its own network. Yeah. This will be its own network. It'll be separate, but it's a network-based item, so we can search much faster and, again, much more user-friendly. Okay. So you can still retrieve the information that you need to retrieve now with the current system, but you'll have an improved. This will be improved, and as we speak today, there are areas I can't retrieve it. I'm, I'm experiencing areas where I want to go back and look at things, and I can't get it because the files are corrupted based on the hard drives that are in those DVRs. They're starting to fail. It's just like your computer. If you bought a computer 10 years ago, yeah. that hard drive you had on it, doesn't match today's technology and the needs. So you're documenting as you go when you reach an area, a camera, a system that is no longer recording properly. Tom Gaditis manages that with a couple of the other folks that have you're been trained up on it. it. But our, our primary area is our booking room. We've got to make sure that we're right. covered in the booking room. Right. And not all the cameras in the booking room are up and running. And we, okay. we need to get that, we need that addressed. Okay. It's critical. Thank you very much. Mr. Bain. Negative, sir. <clears throat> So, do you um, have a priority for these? Uh, like this is your number one priority. Absolutely, the video surveillance system <clears throat> will be my number one priority. Um, I would have to say the body cameras are number two. Tasers would be number three, and the truck uh, would be number four. Okay, great. Um, Any other questions? Nope. No. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. And thanks for all the information. Yeah, that's good. Just give them a minute to break yeah, down. Yeah, take your time. <laughs> it's nice to know that you're keeping up so well with all of the information that comes in. I was in a store today, and they had a surveillance camera, but I'm sure it's the definitely the uh, older version. You'd be surprised with some of the systems you see, especially in the restaurants now, that uh, when we have, we have a criminal act that occurs, the first thing the guys do is go out and scan and who has, who has video surveillance, and it's helped us out in the street solve a lot of crime, so it can only enhance our operations internally. Thank you for coming Thank in you. tonight. Thank you. They didn't put that camera up just because you were going to be there? Mm -hmm. I hope not. Um, Next, we have approval of minutes. Number one is September 14, 2015. Wait a minute. Let me grab my minutes. I will so move, and I want to check and see if I Second. have corrections. Yes, I have. A... Are you ready? Yes. Page five of eight. <clears throat> um, up in the top paragraph. Selectman Woolsey, Dalton Road situation, drainage issues, private road. And then it says, board, beach waste. Um, think we're foolish to allow the board to dispose of trash through the town. I don't quite understand how that came about. Um, I don't know if that means our board or, or what. I, I, it's kind of muddled. So what do you want to change it to? Well, the best thing I can think of is that I'm is that we're having a problem disposing of more of a greater volume of trash through the town. I don't know how else to interpret it, and frankly, I don't remember what I said, but that's a little muddled. And then in the middle paragraph, um, operating budget. So our investment. Oh, I did the public works, and then it says. Uh, oh, I've provided Fred with snow insurance. It should say snow insurance information. The information part was left off. And I think, oh, on page 7 of 8, um,
I guess the wording is correct. I just wonder if we need to do a follow through. This is about the school district notifying us of what they need to purchase and we were going to call them in to approve because I don't think we've approved there. This is not a, basically okay, a minute well, correction. Okay. So we have a first, we have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Moving on to September 21st. I will so move that we accept the minutes and I'm second. not sure. I have no corrections. Anyone else have? All those in favor? Unanimous. Till September 28th. I'm grabbing them. I will so move that we accept the minutes of September 28th. Second. And let me look really quickly. I think I have no corrections All on that. All those in favor? Unanimous. September 30th, 2015. I will so move. Just let me check for corrections. No. All those in favor, unanimous, and October 5th, 2015. I'll so move that we accept the October Second. 5th minutes. And on page 3, um, oh, just to clarify, the, about the middle of the page, right after Chief A uh, says Selectman Woolsey, um, and we're talking about the water unmetered water being provided for fires uh, and I explained that the ISO rating is the availability of the water and that is 40 percent of the rating. The ISO rating is what for the public's understanding is what gives us a good insurance rating so that our insurance premiums are lower because of the factors involved in the fire department and other than that I don't all, have anything. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Moving on to the town manager's report. Mr. Welch. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I've received an email indicating that the businesses in the town of Hampton, or having headquarters in the town, have paid $7,357,785.92 in rooms and meals taxes to the state. That's for one year. <laughs> That's a lot of money. Uh, the number needs to be refined, but it gives a good ballpark figure of contributions from businesses located here or, head or headquartered here. Yeah, yeah. Note that rooms and meals taxes from the state shared with the town last year was $722,150, slightly less. Yeah. We are still issuing, uh, we will be issuing next week to the cable provider, and actually I'm going to do it tomorrow, a list of requests previously discussed with the board. Uh, for the company to discuss with us regarding possible amendments, the cable agreement as previously discussed with this board. We are taking this action because to date we have not received uh, and been contacted by the cable provider despite written indications to the contrary. Mm. So hopefully, um, and that just so to refresh people's memories when we discussed this with the board, that was to define more closely the relationship between the SAUs and the and the cable provider and uh, for a public access channel through the cable provider. We note the state retirement system announced that their return on investments was reported at 3.5 percent as opposed to their projected forecast of 7.75 percent for income on investments. This may foretell a coming increase in retirement costs assessed <laughs> to the town as employees in the coming two-year cycle. It may foretell that? Well, I've, you never know. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. <clears throat> well, they certainly backed out of paying any of their share, so they're not worried. No, that, that's why it may be maybe. Yeah. Uh, we remind residents that your refuse and recycling carts should be taken in and off the streets and sidewalks except for the day of collection. With the winter coming, carts may be damaged due to plowing as well as salting and sanding operations. Carts damaged due to these winter activities will be replaced at cost to the resident. And that's currently town policy. Mm. Please keep in mind that the town parking lots are closed effective October 15th except for special events at the beach. Vehicles parked in violation will be ticketed in accordance with the ordinance. And as stated earlier, those parking lots are declared to be open during snow emergencies so people can park off the streets. But they have to be removed by 8 o'clock the following morning following the snow emergency. 
Mr. Chairman, I have a, uh, a bunch of other things that need to be brought up, uh, and I've asked the finance director to come tonight because we need to amend the budget that you have passed because we have new information that's going to cause us to amend the budget. Part of that is dealing with uh, costs for uh, insurance coverages. And um, we have, for a period of time at my request, uh, been researching uh, every invoice received for the last year for gasoline. And um, we have done a, a composite for that, and we are prepared to, this evening, request that you decrease the amount of money in the individual gasoline accounts as, as required. Good. So I'm going to ask the finance director who's got a shriek of material okay. with regards to these Why and a couple of other matters. the old business? We'll come bring okay. you up. On, you can just stay right there for old business, okay. but let's finish with this. Fine with me. Um, Mr. Bridal. No, the only thing I want to uh, reiterate is that the town parking lots will be open when we have snow emergencies at the yes, beach. Yes, that's correct. So that, uh, like Mr. Preston asks about that, the people don't have to worry about if, that is, if there's that a is snow policy. emergency, they can be they can yes. go into the town parking. That's right. Thank you. This is Wolseley. Do you want me? I the have some questions for the manager. Um, uh, what's, yeah. Do you want me to bring that up under old business or new business? Well, if you have any questions that are on his report. No, I don't have any questions. Okay, I was here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Welch, thank you for a great report. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Uh, Perhaps a letter of uh, support to uh, our state reps that are doing in center. They're doing such a great job with the uh, meals and rentals. Yeah. Uh, if we could uh, gin that up and uh, make a motion and get that out next week, Mr. Chairman, that might be appropriate. They're working hard. It's mm -hmm. an initiative. Um, again, it's close to 200 million bucks that we're we're sending up to the state within the zip code, and this is uh, this is a good first. First step. We have a consensus. We should include our senator for yes. that. Yes. Yes. Yes, ma'am. No. Yep. So that's great. And then, uh, can we get the New Hampshire Municipal uh, Association rep down here uh, to uh, kind of paint a picture, thumbnail sketch? This would be a request. Uh, we had uh, the trustees and stock markets uh, chaotic. The returns are down. I was on their website all this afternoon. Uh, they're going to set a rate. Uh, the rate's going to be down. How is that going to impact our pension obligations? How is that going to impact our budget next year? And I think that needs to be put on the front burner. We have a consensus of that? Yeah. No, no problem. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it. Okay. The, um, I have something that has to do with uh, about the trash oh, uh, yes. recycling carts. Um, so everybody got a... Um, you know the carts at the beginning, yes. one for free. Yeah. Um, two for free. Two for free is what, what I meant to say. Yeah. And um, then at one point we had that they could buy them if they wanted extra yes. or at cost. Yes. And does that still stand? Yes, it does because you that that you set that as policy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if a town. Um, resident wanted one they could just go down to the dpw and order one or they they someone told me they have hundreds of them there they, they, they have carts so they have carts in stock so it's not a matter just go down uh, pay for it pick it up and mm -hmm. take it away and any resident can do that any legal resident of the town yes okay because i have a uh person that went down to get one and they weren't allowed to um get one because they live at hampton meadows we don't collect oh. Hampton Meadows. Mm -hmm. so. But why wouldn't they be able to just buy one anyway if well, they're at co the same cost for what, the town? What's been happening is, and we've had this on a number of occasions, people have gone down, I'm a resident, I want to buy a cart, and they go down and they buy a cart, and they're in a complex where we don't collect the trash, and the next thing we know, that cart is out in the road to be Wheeling picked up. Wheeling it out, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what they're doing. Yeah. And uh, we we really have a problem just leaving a cart at the side of the road that's already full of trash because mm -hmm. they don't take it back. They just leave it there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a problem for us. It has to be on a collection route. Uh, otherwise, we'd have uh, Dunvegan Woods, for instance. We'd have, what, 180 apartments we'd have to pick up because they would just mm -hmm. simply line the road with it. So. Yeah. Well, uh, this, these people don't. They, that's not why they want one. Uh, they want one because they feel that uh, if they had to go buy one because they want one um, for inside the garage, that they would have to, you know, they've already go have gone and bought it at Home Depot. 
and had to pay $80 versus they could have bought it from the town for $45 and they have a problem with this. You'd have to change your policy. So that is in the policy? That it's only sold to those people who actually we do pick up for. Now, that would substantially increase our Department of Public Works budget because we don't pick up any of the condominium complexes we in bet, town. We better know. And those would be hundreds, maybe maybe another thousand carts. I don't know mm -hmm. how many that would be, but many hundreds of carts we'd have to buy for that mm -hmm. purpose and distribute mm -hmm. for free. That right. money's not in the budget. There isn't a, there's many hundreds of carts down there though. And uh, so these people are, feel like they're shortchanged, that they should be allowed to get what everyone else gets. If you want to change the policy, that that's up to the board, not up to me. If you wish to do that, that's fine. We'll be happy to distribute them. So I will ask the person to come in and speak. And then we'll let them speak, and then we'll uh, make a decision on that. Okay. It's a board, it's a board a good, decision. A good so. way to do it. Yeah. So when, I, when they get in contact with me, I'll just suggest they come in and make their appeal here. Okay. Um, <clears throat> moving on to new business, old business. That's you. That's me? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, thank you for coming in tonight. We yeah. appreciate it. As Fred said, he had uh, he's saying thank you before he sees the stack. Oh, yes, the stack. Fred had me do a very in depth analysis oh my. of the uh, gasoline and diesel accounts across the entire budget. So I was thank able you. to. I think overall we ended up cutting $39,000, $37,000 in regards to gasoline and diesel. Yep. So we are very pleased with that. And then this morning, uh -oh. I got the phone call from Health Trust oh, good. in regards to the rate increase. So the 39000 that I worked hard to remove from the budget last week resulted in about a 279000 increase because <laughs> the health insurance rates have gone up yeah. for 2016. Yep. Um, so that is what you guys have in front of you there, the new health insurance rates, and then you also have a new summary copy of the budget so you can see a breakdown of the gasoline and diesel accounts <coughs> where money was cut and where money was added. Basically what I did is I went back and I took a year snapshot of every single um, gasoline and diesel account in the budget. I found out we came up with an average cost from uh, the past 12 months and we went back and found out the gallons that were purchased for the past year started from January to December. So all of those adjustments uh, were made on the gasoline accounts. And I have a nice very large spreadsheet upstairs that shows all of that and how we came up with it. I know last year the budget committee was um, concerned with the fact that every line just said the same as it had been saying for years and years, you know, 1,300 gallons at $3.30. So Fred and I thought that it would be prudent of us to go back and see how much gallons of gas the departments are using and then to come up with an average cost. Like I said, we used um, from September of 2014 through August of 2015, so it kind of cut some of those high price months and some of the lower prices and we came up with an average cost and that it will be reflected if this passes through tonight in the budget books when they go um, come back to you guys your new copies and when they go to the budget committee everyone will be able to see exactly like what we did budgeting wise for that in regards to health insurance since I knew that I was already coming here for gas and diesel they had met on Friday so I contacted uh, Peter Chapel and he called me right up to tell, let me know that um, our overall rate increase was 17.3% mm -hmm. over all the variety of plans that we do offer to employees and retirees. Uh, the January pool as a whole was 8.1%. Um, so since ours was 17.3, it is definitely based on usage and claims that were reflected from Hampton as opposed to us being our rate going up because of other groups, you know. Um, so when I went back and recalculated the increase for the budget in front of you, I used 17.85% because I took the group of employees that we have right now 
and figured out what the average percentage amongst those employees were and that's what I have uh, changed in the um, on the first two sheets that I gave you you'll see that increase in there so it added let me see here I thought I had all the numbers yeah it went from uh, I think it added $279,000 to that line item in the budget from what we had uh, proposed when I was here before. So if you guys, the budget committee has their first work session next Thursday, so I was trying to get them their books uh, prior to their meeting tomorrow night or by the end of this week. But before I can do that, the board needs, before I can pass the budget along to them, mm -hmm. the board needs to decide if they would like to accept these changes in the gasoline and diesel accounts, which are all noted on this, on the first two sheets I gave you. And then the, I um, adjusted the health insurance account for the library and the health insurance account for the town Good. under municipal insurance. questions mr bridal nope i think she's done a good job it's nice to see you went back and did a little more homework i'm not gonna say did your homework but did a little more homework mm -hmm. and uh again it's, it's it's always fluid until we actually get a lot of the figures in so thank you well we're going to keep the spreadsheet going forward now i've Perfect. assigned that to my accounts payable um employee and i said you know fill this in on a yearly basis so every year whenever anyone asks yeah. we'll be able to tell you guys how much Maybe. fuel they've used and then we can get an average cost per gallon too. Good. Thank you. Excellent idea. Now the health trust, unlike the liability, unlike the PLT, yes. this is okay, this is locked in, this is this is what it is yes. the next year. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to have any problem getting health insurance and all that stuff. No, our contract, I believe, we just re-signed the three-year one last year, correct, Fred? I think yes. it was last year. That's correct. Okay. So we have a three-year contract with Health Trust. So cool on that. Last year, I think we had a minus seven percent or so, in, which are for the first nine. time nine. Nine something. Yeah. So it fluctuates. I know I've seen it as high as twenty-eight. We saw it in the eight to ten range for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we've been up in the fifteen to twenty range a long time. Yeah. It's just kind of one of those things. You never know what's going to happen. Now on the fuel. I did have calls from people saying to me, why are we talking about $3 a gallon when I'm only paying $2 and whatever? And uh, is this going to in any way prejudice us as far as the state contract? Or no. we just shut up and go and buy the gas? We the use their rate? figures. Yeah. yeah, and I can let you know, um, I did not pro provide you tonight with all of it, but I have it all, and we're going to put some of it in the budget book, so you guys will be getting it. But we used... Um, an average rate for unleaded of two dollars and fifty four cents and for diesel we use three dollars and twenty seven cents and like i said that was with calculating what we spent um we looked at the 15th of every month from september of 2014 through august of 2015 yeah. and then we came up with the average cost from there because i saw in the news earlier this evening it was a vendor down in massachusetts and he was talking about heating oil and he said he expects there's plenty of supply of that right, and and the prices should stay stable throughout the winter so hopefully the same will be yeah well yes yeah we have our fingers crossed but thank you that was a lot of work but it looks great for going forward well this will give us a measure yeah. that finance will track every month for every department excellent yeah, i saw uh, tonight on the news uh, it's two dollars and nine cents is the average in uh, massachusetts yeah mr bean thank you mr chairman thanks director uh so if my math serves me right on a 12-month basis on the health insurance that line is going to increase almost six hundred and fifty thousand huh? dollars if we go from 364 down to 310, which is the expiring, that looks like $54,000 a month times 12. That's the total of all of the rates, though, and that includes some of our Medicomp employees. So those will be the retirees, not employees, I'm sorry, the retirees who are on the Medicomp and stuff. Mm -hmm. Those numbers there are not, I, you're looking at the numbers on this sheet right here, Phil? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, that is not... Um, so what, what we need on the board, especially as we're in a budget time, uh, Director, is 
is we try and make a budget because if you crunch those numbers uh, exclusively on that, it's a two and a half percent increase ballpark uh, on our budget as it stands now. So as we go on a budget, and I'm sure budget will be interested in this information, is exactly what is the employer share of this increase. So we see we see your monthly total and it's 17.3% mm -hmm. is business owners. Yep. We'll need to get, not tonight. I have the employer share right here. You do? On my sheet here, yep. Okay. Because these are just total costs that you're looking at there. So the total increase, um, it was at, let's see, in the budget that you had in front of you before, it was at 2635917 And it's going up to $2,903,204.25. That is calculator. I do. Wow. And I had it written down upstairs. I thought it was written on this sheet, but it's not. So let me just do that real quick. A ten point fourteen percent increase. Hmm. Two hundred and sixty seven, two eighty seven for the year. For the employer share. Yes, that was the I was only dealing with the employer share when I put these numbers um here. The numbers here of course are include employee and employer, but the numbers in front of you are only the employer share. So it's about one percent increase. Um and, and if the board uh, would agree, uh, the, these increases um, at almost 20%, I think uh, NHMA, the health trust, if, if you will, um, needs to come down, uh, needs to discuss uh, whether that's in private session with the board, uh, what's driving this kind of increase. They will uh, give us that. They just didn't have time today. Well, they, gonna, I, we're gonna, we're gonna get all of that anyway. Well, customers. yeah, but the rates were just set Friday afternoon. I'm, I'm just saying, so, uh, they you know, this thing, is, this thing is trending. We've yeah. got negotiations. We've got Cadillac tax. Absolutely. We've got um, people out there on on, uh, on fixed budgets, if you will, that are taxpayers, and uh, these kind of uh, increases, and especially with uh, Cadillac taxes around the corner, uh, right. they're, they're working their way pretty quickly. Right. Uh, we will get a full report, though, and, coming to uh, I, I, w I want uh, the health trust down here personally. I think the rest of the board does. And, uh, do we have a consensus on yeah. that? Yeah, you do. I mean, uh, that's, that's ridiculous. It really is. Um, and I'd like, to, I'd like uh, some lost experiences in what's driving that rate. And what our participation is by employees to uh, participate in programs they offer. So the rate that you have the same situation as the ones that work here. Yeah. For the health insurance Yes, and that's included in the new number on the issue. They're, on a, um, they're all on the same plan. So for them, uh, I use the 17.7% because every single employee over there has the same plan. And so they, that actually went up to 17.7. For the town one, I used an average because they're, um, the employees are on several different plans. And questions, Fred? No, I think that uh, uh, in order for us to finish the budget books for the budget committee, we need approval to put those numbers in. We mm -hmm. have them. Yeah. Um, we're going to mm -hmm. knock some money off on one side, and we're going to put the health insurance back in on the other side for the rate that they've given us, which is very high. Um, we haven't had a rate increase like that in a number of years. So um, we'll get them down here to have a, a go around with the board, an explanation, and, and, and they're going to send down some material as to why the rate's gone up, so you have some backup material before you meet with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, I guess, ask the hard questions and, and see what they come back with for answers. It's a big increase. So do we need a motion? Uh, we need a motion to amend the budget that's, that the board had originally approved uh, to take into consideration the changes that uh, the finance director has brought to you this evening. Yes, sir. I want to make that motion. I'll move uh, the language that Fred has just expressed. And is there a dollar amount? I have the new uh, bottom line, and I also have the different sections if you'd prefer to do it by section, however you guys would like. I think the bottom line is fine. Okay. It's uh, $26,762,945. And that will take into consideration the gas and diesel changes and the health insurance for the town and the library. That's these two pages. Yes. And I'll make a the second. motion. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Thank you very much for coming in tonight. Do you want to do? Oh, 
tax rate too, or? Yes, so I'll do the tax rate too. Okay. That time of year again. Good stuff. And so yeah, I. She is. <laughs> hey, it all just transpired within the last day or so, Friday afternoon, I believe. So I have heard from DRA. Yes. Thank you. And they have our preliminary tax rate. You already have that sheet, yep, right? I do. And it is eight dollars and nine cents, which you will see that on the top of your form here, and it will show you the fiscal impact on the average uh, family home. And that this year has gone up. I confirmed this with the town assessor. It is three hundred thirty thousand four hundred two dollars. Mm -hmm. So you can see there with the new tax rate of eight oh nine. This is only the municipal portion. I don't want anyone to get right. real excited at home. Right. Let's clarify. The municipal portion, which is the portion we have control over right now, has gone up, um, is going from $7.24 to $8.09. It's not a surprise. It's what we expected based on all of the Warren articles and the budget. Well, it was a default budget, but everything that passed at town meeting in March. So um, I think in all reality, I believe we had predicted 813 or 814. So this is a little bit better, um, 809. On the sheet that you guys have in front of you, I listed that at the top, so it's an increase of $281 on that average uh, home for 2015. I have included our current fund balance, uh, which is $5,057,505. Um, Fred has some proposals, I think, in regards to Warren articles that will be coming to you guys later of some uses for the fund balance in those total $860,000, which would bring the new balance to $4,197,505. I've also shown you there the DRA minimum 5% uh, retention rate, which has always been our goal to at least at the very minimum to have that, which is $3,067,000 thousand nine hundred and fifteen dollars mm -hmm. and then down I've broken down for you guys different options for the board to discuss in the past you have discussed whether you would yeah. like to use some fund balance to help bring down that eight dollars and nine cents and so that is all listed out um, you can see it's about ten cents for about ten cent difference if you or about nine cent difference for about every two hundred and fifty thousand that you choose to bring from your fu bring the fund down, fund balance down by yeah. you get about nine cents less in your tax rate and then I broke it down into the savings and it ends up being about thirty dollars in the average tax bill on all your the breakdowns there for you guys um and if you chose to use a million, it would bring it down to 5.21. And that's a little close in my opinion, but it's the board's decision what they choose to do. And once we have that decision, then the tax rate can be set and the tax collector can be happy. I was just reading my email and I left at 4.30, I think, and she must have sent me an email after because, like, do you have the tax rate yet? I said, not yet. So um, their ba DRA is basically just waiting on... Uh, myself to go back to them and say yes we would like to use some fund balance or no we do not want to use fund balance the total tax rate I should have mentioned that I guess because um, I only did the municipal part the total tax rate is $19.34 up from $18.31 from which is what it was last year so Mr. Bridal I'd like to hear from Fred first I think that uh, <clears throat> you need to apply some of the surplus yep. to reduce the rate. Yep. The question is how much you want to, you want to apply. You can go down to uh, the three million one, which is the five percent. I'm just talking round figure now. Um, that will put you pretty close to not being able to use much in the way of tax rates next year uh, for reduction, as far as the surplus is concerned. Uh, most of the warrant articles that have been recommended this year. Uh, which is around eight hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars for surplus reduction uh, are all deferred articles I haven't tried to put any equipment in there that would normally be something we would have on the warrant as a regular basis for uh, public works or police department uh, vehicle equipment those sorts of things that we always traditionally appropriate funds for to purchase uh, for instance the warrant articles that you had this evening the tasers, the body cameras, and the police video system for eighty, ninety, and eighty thousand dollars are all recommended to come from surplus. 
Uh, they're all deferred. They have been deferred for a number of years. And each of the department has a number of these items that adds up to about $860,000. Uh, so I, I think it's important that uh, we replace some of those items uh, that have been lax over a number of years of, of getting done because of the difficulty we've had with budgets and default budgets. But I also think that uh, you need to apply funds to reduce the rate as far as the increase is concerned. And you could, can go to three million one again. I'm doing, using a round yeah. figure, uh, if you so wish. I have no idea at this point what we're going to be able to commit at the end of the year uh, from increased revenues or decreased appropriations that are not spent. <clears throat> uh, it's too early in the year to tell that. We are very close uh, in our expenditures with the budget, and uh, I've in fact shut the departments off as far as budget expenditures is concerned, except for normal day-to-day -day operations and payroll. Um, anything that uh, normally needed a department head signature now needs my signature on it or the assistant town managers and the finance directors before it will be paid. Uh, that's excluding items that have already been committed before we put that, that motion out there on the floor for the department head. So we're getting close to the end of the year. There are no wish lists. There are uh, things that we're just going to try to get done that we have to get done every single year. Uh, we've already been cautioned by our weather service people uh, to expect colder weather than usual and more snow than usual for the last three months. Uh, we'll see how that works. Uh, I'm hoping that we go back to two years ago and we didn't have any snow uh, <laughs> so that we don't have to worry about that. But. I'll vote with you for no snow. <laughs> yeah, I'll go for no snow, yeah. So I, w I would recommend you use some funds. The question is, how, how comfortably do you feel in using funds down to three million one? I don't feel very. Com I, I I can see us doing five hundred thousand, but yes, that was exactly. I don't right. think yeah. we should go any more than that. Right can I now. second that? Yep. yep. Okay. So we ha are you making a motion? I'll make that a motion. And you're seconding it, yes, sir. <clears throat> any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have a couple more items. Uh, we have reduced our debt service, have we not, Christy? Because I don't think there's any other way for us to consolidate the non-SRF bonds. We've already done all bonds. We've done all that. Yes, we have. There's but nothing. we have reduced our uh, debt service. We actually knocked off four bonds. Right. So that is some help. It, it does help a lot. Okay, and hmm. oh, and just to clarify for the public, we're talking in terms of the calculations for the first um, tax billing, the second tax billing to come up next July 1st. This is for the December 1st cause, because this, you're... This is the last tax billing of this year. Oh, I thought it's the first, no, because in in July we were still running on 2013, I thought. We were running on 2014. Mm. One half of the previous year's taxes mm -hmm. are billed at the first tax billing, which is due on July 1st. Okay. And, and that may be... That may be adjusted a little bit depending on what the right. state does. Right. Uh, the second half tax bill, which is with the one we're talking about now, okay. uh, goes into effect, and that, that accumulates everything for the year, any changes for the year that are voted at town meeting, plus any changes in state requirements. Okay. Uh, but so what billing comes out next July? That's one half of the new tax rate. But the tax rate won't be set. Then. No, it's an estimate. It's, it's an estimate okay. required by statute. I just want to clarify because I know there are two separate. There are two buildings. separate processes. Okay. Yes. Well, we'll grin and bear it. True. <laughs> so the tax rate is going to be 1916. Roughly. 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 We have to wait till it gets officially it's, it's stamped because yeah. that was just a preliminary. So. Well, thank you very much for coming in tonight. I don't know how you do it. It's amazing that you're able to oh, I know. whip it all up and keep yeah. on top of it. Yeah. You'll have new pages for us? 
I'm going to have whole new guts for you. Oh, oh, yeah. Perfect. We've added a, a new appendix to the budget. It's Appendix G. Okay. And it's going to be filled with all the extras, and you're going to have the gas analysis in there, and then all of those little the things that the department heads have given us, the special additional information, that will be in there, too. Very good. Thank, Thank you. We're going to have much. so much information. Good grief. And we're hoping next week you'll, be, you'll have the default budget to vote. Because that's not finished as of yet. Mr. Chairman, to continue, uh, we did have the auction. Uh, I will say to you that we made $200. We uh, basically we broke even. Uh, and having to have employees there, it cost us a few dollars um, to conduct the auction. We do have a warrant article in that will allow us, uh, if the warrant article is approved, to actually sell equipment uh, for the scrap yep. value. Yep to scrap dealers so that we will, uh, in fact, make some money as opposed to losing some money on this on this deal at the end of the year. We've also received the uh, bill for the county tax of uh, $3,138,007, which went up this year uh, as part of the, the overall town tax rate. That is not due until the mid-December, so we won't be invoicing that out until the beginning of December. Um, so how much did that go up? That went up 2%, I believe. It didn't go up very much. Uh, it never does. Uh, it's just one of those years. Again, the state uh, has changed the relationship and revenues to the cities and towns and the counties because we're all captive to what the state does. And some costs have been passed down over the course of the year, and we're now realizing that we're picking up additional state costs uh, as part of the tax rate. So. Uh, that's one of the reasons the county cost has gone up. And plus, of course, they're paying their bonds off like the rest of us are and so on and so forth. Uh, we also have, and I have um, a copy of this for each of you. These are the, uh, the dates on which I asked Public Works to come up with um, some dates when the Budget Committee could do a tour with the Public Works Director and the Deputy Director present. Thank you. Um, when I received uh, all the requests that I received uh, for a tour, um, I immediately went to the Public Works Director and asked what days or weekends he could take along with the Deputy Director and conduct tours. These are the scheduled dates that he could do that. Uh, Saturday the 24th from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., which I probably think is the, the best time for members of the Budget Committee to go during the day. Um, and I would recommend any of these dates and times, depending upon uh, their getting hold of the Public Works Director and, in fact, um, uh, telling him they would like to come down for a quick tour of the facility inside and out to look at equipment and facilities. So with your permission, because this has to go through you, uh, it deals with the Budget Committee. This is between the Board and the Budget Committee. Uh, I'm looking for your approval to send these dates out to the Budget Committee. You want a motion to do that? Um, yeah. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay. So we'll... Uh, those will go out tomorrow morning. So will Phil be talking about this tomorrow? Or is tomorrow the meeting? Yeah. Yeah. What meeting? Budget, budget has a meeting tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Uh, so. The board also asked us to look at snow insurance. And we've done that. Unfortunately, it won't be applicable this coming year because we have to commit the money for the insurance in November. Uh, and we don't have it in the budget. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to get this information to you. If on the basis that they have allocated this insurance proposal to us, if that had been in effect this year, uh, in our storm that we had, the, 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 that terrible month that we had for storms, uh, we would have collected $375,000 from the insurance company, mm. which would have more than paid for our total mm. costs. So, But what were the insurance costs? Uh, yielded value was $62,743. Uh, the cost of insurance... Geez, the cost of insurance wasn't very much. Christina did a lot of work on that. Yeah, she has. I'd have to go back and, and scan this through again, but it was a fairly small amount of money. Yeah. Um, and they, they put together a special proposal for us 
simply because um, they wanted to, um, $14,800 was the cost of the insurance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. No. We can't so. find it. It's not there. It's just not there. So um, is this the type of thing we would want to put on a warrant article? Well, it be passed. I'm not sure we want to do that in a warrant article, but uh, I'm going to get this information out to the board and you review it and uh, if you want to amend the budget then I think you can do that uh, but somehow the needs to be an appropriation to get it done and frankly um, it looks like the separation between the budget and the default budget is going to be something in the order of five or six hundred thousand dollars so mm -hmm. Uh, it doesn't take a brain science to figure out that uh, the regular budget may or may not pass, depending on how people feel about that. Um, if it doesn't, then this needs to go in a warrant article. So I, I need to have you really think about that and give me a reaction uh, as to what you think you want to have done with it. I like that concept. I think that's... Then people have the option to... Pretty beneficial to a community, yeah. <clears throat> and that's law well, from that you have to well let's <laughs> <laughs> we've got so bloody much going on here um, yeah uh, well only that I think you need to I don't know if you're ready to react to what the police department presented tonight I, I we've got these staggered out across a, a period of time police articles were tonight fire articles are going to be on 11 2 DPW articles on mm -hmm. 11 16 all other articles will be on 11 9 so we got three weeks here uh, that we're going to spread articles to you. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you want to react to these this week or next week, but I would like to get a reaction to them at some point in time so I can send them to the Budget Committee. Mm -hmm. At least we'll keep the, the communication going and, and they'll have some material to work on. If I may, Mr. Chair, when Jim comes back next week. Yeah, yeah I would say yeah. let's yeah. wait till next week. He's not here this yeah. week. Yeah. That's it, sir. So other old business, Mr. Bridal. Uh, nothing under old business, thank you. Mrs. Walsley. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, I want to thank Fred because the discarded furniture that I mentioned in uh, the vicinity of my neighborhood has been removed. Um, I had hoped it would be. You might want to, uh, we might want to make an announcement to the public or put something on the website that uh, you can't just discard particularly large pieces of furniture into the public way and expect that they will be picked up because they will not be and it's a hazard both with winter coming on with the plows and also just generally because where that was located it was really in the right of way and people can't just lug furniture out of their houses and dump it on the side of the road. No, they're doing us one better. We discovered an opening of up the Public Works Department on, on Monday that somebody had taken Sunday night down and discarded their used furniture on the side of the road at the entrance of Public Works. Oh, that was nice. So we got to pick up more furniture. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, the next one for Fred, um, may we, and I, I believe we can't find the 2014 audit yet on the town website. I should have thought to ask that when Christy, uh, when Christy was here. It's not finished yet. The 2014? 2014. Okay, so it will be it as will soon as be it's finished, it will published be up on the as site. soon as it's finished. And it should be finished in time to be in the annual report. Oh, yes. For, yep. Okay. Um, I think DRA has a copy of the relevant sections, but I don't think the entire report is finished. Okay. Um, before the uh, area for the assistant town manager was created by the Public Works Department, there were pictures from the USS Hampton hanging on the wall. I'm given to understand that nobody knows where they are. Oh, I think I know where they are. Oh, you say, oh, all right. Then would it be possible Nobody's to... Nobody's asked me yet. Oh, because I had someone who asked, <laughs> I think, who asked Christy, and she said she didn't know, and I can't... I, mean, I, I have a suspicion Christina. where they are. They're locked up. Oh, okay. But I don't know if it would be, perhaps it would be nice to restore them uh, at some point in time, just put them back up on the, on the newly configured wall because people thought very um, it's on my list on my desk very sentimentally yeah. about that um, but, oh salt shed 
two odd years ago, a suggestion was made to Public Works to secure the east end of that salt shed against the weather. I brought it up probably a month or so ago with Public Works. Still open to the elements, and we're going to be talking about ordering more salt and stuff like that. Should be a fairly simple pulley thing and, and to secure that end. I'm not happy about paying money for salt and having it sit in that completely exposed salt shed. Well, I know they're working on some remedy to that. I just don't know when it will be put up. I know they're anxious to get it done as well. This has to be like two years ago that we talked about that. Well, I, we've changed directors a number of times. I know that. So I, we have a brand new director. Uh, he's, I know he's anxiously working on that with the deputy director, okay. trying to get that done. I just, I just thought I would mention it quickly. And I've that, mentioned it several times myself. Okay. And I'm that find is out the, <laughs> the end of my inquiry. Mr. Bean. Thank you. Just getting back to the uh, stuff, uh, risk management uh, instrument, uh, weather insurance. What did you spend on uh, snow last year? The winter? It would have paid for that plus. Right, but it was like three sixty-seven. Three hundred. It was. Let's say in round figures, it was four hundred grand. Oh, 400 grand. okay. Okay. So uh, you could have paid that, that insurance. one storm. We could have collected three hundred seventy-five thousand. Yeah. You could have paid 000. that insurance premium out of that for. Yeah. Uh, Oh yeah, twenty-five years. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, maybe yeah, you know, closer to thirty, I think. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and I think yeah. that um, going forward, it's 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 prudent given where we live, given which climate change. Right. Uh, um, and we expand that to the hurricane season and really look at the total picture, uh, and and get a good figure on that and be aggressive. Right. The uh, Chamber of Commerce has used that and collected. Uh, in the past on their end of the season event, mm. the uh, seafood festival. Uh, crop insurance is very rain. Yeah. High tech with mega data is moving into the buying those insurance platforms. And uh, it's a, it's yeah. a very effective yeah. way to t really manage fiscal challenge. Good. I have inquired on the uh, PLT insurance, property liability insurance, yeah. uh, whether or not we're covered for hurricanes, earthquakes, tornadoes. Ah. We're receiving more and more tornado warnings as it stands mm -hmm. right now. Uh, and I'm concerned that we're covered for those three calamities should they occur. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have a tsunami, it's not going to make a lot of difference at Public Works but uh, or at some of our other facilities, but uh, we're also looking to see whether we're covered for that. Thank you, sir. Good. Um, <clears throat> one of the uh, questions that I've had is about um, and Rusty, you might know about this. I hear that there's a lot of trash on Mary Bachelor Road, uh, and I was told it comes from there's a lot of people partying in the woods, and um, you know, with what do you call them, all-terrain vehicles or. Mm -hmm. The only thing I've seen it, it, over the past week or so, there's been some buildup right on the corner of Mary Bachelor and Toll on Timber Swamp Road. Uh, I hadn't noticed anything other until previous to that. You don't hear the people, the noise? No. Because I have, you know, the person that's questioned it said that they, I told them that they should call the police. They, they were afraid that the people are going to know it's this person calling. She said that it's people that appear to be more than 20 years old doing it. Mm. So have you heard anything like that? No, but we'll find out in the morning whether it's true. Okay. And you can have them take a look about the trash. Exactly. And we'll do a very close look about the trash. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on to new business. Uh, number one is release of encumbered funds for the fire department traffic lights at D Street. Mr. The Welch. The uh, selectmen, at the request of um, the fire department, had encumbered funds to reinstall the traffic lights at D Street and Ashworth Avenue, which controls traffic moving down Ashworth so that the fire department can exit Brown Avenue, go the wrong way on Ashworth Avenue, and go up D Street, because that's the easiest way for them to move along Ocean Boulevard to the north. Um, we've hit a little glitch. And the glitch is called um, Fairpoint Communications. Um, they're not willing, as the other communications people are and um, utility companies are, 
to allow us just simply to attach the poles. Um, they want a $2 million insurance policy to be kept on tap forever. Uh, they want $24,650 for respacing of the, the lines on the poles to go from the fire station around the corner to that the poles that are there. Yeah. Uh, we don't have the money uh, to do that. It's not in the it's not encumbered. It's not in the warrant article. It's 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 not part of the, the proposition, and we don't have the funds in the fire department to do this. So, uh, as opposed to holding encumbered funds, which aren't going to be used, the fire chief rightly so, has recommended the selectmen remove the encumbrance and put the funds to surplus. I can tell you that my plan is that next year we're either going to get remote controlled lights that we can control from the fire station without wiring and they will stop traffic on Ashworth Avenue when they're activated. And they'll be on the sides of the road. Or we'll simply trench down Brown Avenue around the corner and erect two of our own poles and put the lights on those and not have to be involved with the utility companies. Uh, oh. Those are the two options that we have and we're going to do one of them, hopefully the cheapest one. Uh, we can probably do the lights some for around $2,500 a piece uh, for the set uh, to stop traffic down there. Hmm. So Questions, Mr. Bridal? Yeah, I think if... Uh, Fair points being this generous to them, we all look at all ways that we can make sure that we can uh, return some favors. We have, we are. Is there a uh, dollar amount on this? Um, of funds. Yeah, I believe it's twenty-four thousand five hundred dollars that was encumbered. I'll make that motion that we remove the encumbrance. Remove the encumbrance. Twenty-four thousand six hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Any other questions, Mrs. No, SPO Denio did a great job of research on that. Yes, second it. All those in favor, <laughs> unanimous. Next, we have uh, the bid 2015 to 2024 roadway pavement crack ceiling. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we didn't have enough uh, folks bid on this, and that's a problem. Uh, we would like to do the crack ceiling on Route 1. Uh, as you know, if as you drive from um, Four Corners, High Street, uh, north, we have some fairly wide cracks opening in the roadway. They need to be sealed. They need to be sealed before winter. Uh, the purpose for us going out to, uh, to bid on this was to make sure that that work was done. We did not have the required number of uh, people bid on it, so we need your approval to award it to um, the lowest qualified bidder and get this work done immediately and the public works director is recommending that you do that what's the price on price. It? uh well it's the contract is under fifteen thousand dollars it's fourteen dollars and eighty two cents per gallon of seal out sealant applied uh, they have an estimate but um of course when you get out there to actually do it sometimes the estimate isn't 100% perfect. Right. So, so we bid it on the basis of the number of gallons applied, and it's $14.82 per gallon. Yeah. And when we reach the um, the end of the money that's available, which is slightly less than $15,000, and we'll stop the operation. I'll make that motion <coughs> that we uh, we waive the bid policy 718-4-B2. Uh, and go with the uh, lowest bid that we have. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, the New Hampshire State DOT contract 8001823 pricing authorization to purchase salt from Granite State Minerals. Mr. Chairman, this is an, an annual event. Uh, in this case, we're going to Granite State Minerals. They were the low bidder with the state at 51.73, which is not quite a dollar per ton less than we were paying this year or the previous winter. Um, we're going to need 1,435 tons for the salt season that's coming at a bid price of 51.73. Uh, those planned expenditures would be $74,232.55. <coughs> this is a state bid. Uh, we are required to notify you of the acceptance of state bids that are qualified to be accepted. This one is, uh, and it complies with Section 18-4 uh, 
award of bids for professional proposals subsection B, state and federal funds, uh, and we would like to accept the state bid. Last year's price was uh, 48.43 per ton. This year's is 51.73. I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the state's bid on the uh, road salt. Second. Any further questions or comments? All those in favor are unanimous. <clears throat> Next is authorization of installation of fiber data lines from WWTP to DPW administration building. Mr. Chairman, this is a request from the Public Works Department to install <coughs> fiber lines uh, to replace uh, old copper lines uh, from the wastewater treatment plant to the DPW administration building. This is a revised authorization uh, request. This is an amount of $5,226.25 to make the system fully functional. Um, we have a, uh, we were able to honor their, let's see, uh, Paul's reached out to the second company that submitted a quote to complete the work. The first one uh, reneged. They were able to honor their quote at $6,750 per the department's original memo dated September 8th, three companies were originally requested to provide quotes for the scope of work. Only two companies responded. Uh, for this reason, DPW is recommending that the previous authorization and subsequent requisition be nullified for Hampton Technical Services in the amount of $5,226.25. It is recommending that approval and authorization be provided to Howard Systems LLC to complete the work in the amount of $6,750. It is a budgetary item that's currently in the budget. I'll make that motion. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Next, we have authorization to expend 32,000 from the wastewater system development charge fund, sewer access fee account for wastewater treatment projects. Mr. Chairman, this is, these are the last two items on the 2015 Long Range Expenditure Program uh, for modifications and updates of the Department of Public Works uh, Wastewater Division. Uh, these funds will be taken from the sewer access fee account, uh, so there's no impact on the tax rate. The funds are currently there, and this would complete the 2015 repair program under that account. Any questions? Yeah, I, I do have one. And uh, these twenty thousand and twelve thousand dollar figures that were bid out, where they were already bid, they were already passed muster by the board. These these are uh, these are costs obtained from the vendors. They haven't been bid yet. They will have to be bid. Okay, thank you, sir. So moved. I'll second. second. Oh. All those in favor, unanimous. This is this is an example of how that um, fund. Is really working, with, you know, saving the taxpayers a lot of money. Saving the taxpayers because of good money. Yep. Other new business, Mr. Bartle. Nothing, thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Walsley. Uh, just one question, following that on the wastewater treatment plant, um, is that air handling system done yet? It's almost completed. Okay. They're working diligently on it, and uh, as you um, I guess know, it's it's rather a sticky, stinky problem. No questions, sir. No questions. No closing comments. Nope. Any closing comments? No. Nope. Nope. <clears throat> Motion to adjourn. At what time? 2054. <laughs> there you go. All those in favor, unanimous. <laughs> Thank you.